In this lecture, let's study about the respiration. Respiration, it's a biochemical process in which the food is oxidized to release energy in the form of ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate or it is also known as energy currency of the cell. Respiration can be classified into two types, aerobic, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen. The first step in respiration is breathing, a kind of ventilation which involves the intake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide, which involves two steps. One is inhalation, that is known as intake of oxygen rich air. And second step is uh, exhalation, that is uh, removal or release of carbon dioxide rich air. The second part of respiration occurs in this inside the cells it is called a cellular respiration in which glucose is oxidized to release energy and carbon dioxide the food material taken in during the process of nutrition is used in cells to provide energy for various life processes diverse organisms do this in different ways let's see the first step in uh, breakdown of glucose a six carbon molecule into a three carbon molecule this process takes place in cytoplasm. The first step in any respiration process, if it is aerobic or anaerobic, the first step is breakdown of a 6 carbon molecule, that is glucose molecule, into a 3 carbon molecule, that is a pyruvic acid or pyruvate. And this process takes place in cytoplasm. So, in aerobic respiration and in anaerobic respiration, first step, that is a Breakdown of glucose into pyruvate takes place in cytoplasm. Here you can see the glucose molecule is a 6 carbon molecule converted into a 3 carbon molecule in cytoplasm. In anaerobic respiration, this pyruvate enter into the mitochondria where in the presence of oxygen, it further converted to form carbon dioxide, water and energy. So here complete breakdown of glucose molecule takes place. That's why energy produced here is maximum. So energy 38 ATP molecule is produced in aerobic respiration. But net ATP molecule is 36. Because 2 ATP molecule is utilized for the transfer of uh, pyruvate from cytoplasm to mitochondria. Here 2 ATP molecule is utilized. So the net ATP is 36 maximum energy is produced here and in anaerobic respiration first step takes place in cytoplasm it is common to aerobic and anaerobic further step also takes place in cytoplasm in case of anaerobic respiration this takes place in the absence of oxygen in yeast this is also known as fermentation process it further converted to form ethanol carbon dioxide and energy here energy released is very less, 2 ATP molecule is released here. Why 2 ATP molecule is released? Because uh, there is no complete breakdown of food material takes place here. There is no complete breakdown of uh, glucose molecule. That's why the energy produced is very less. And uh, in lack of oxygen in our muscle cells, pyruvate converted to form lactic acid and energy. Due to the accumulation of lactic acid in our muscle cells, muscle cramps occurs. So after doing strenuous exercise, we feel muscle cramps because of the accumulation of lactic acid. So accumulation of lactic acid leads to muscle cramps. So this is all about uh, the pathway of respiration, how glucose molecule is oxidized to provide energy inside our cell. So these are the three metabolic pathways in which glucose molecule is oxidized. Respiration in plants. Plants exchange gases through a small opening known as tomato. Large interstellar space ensure that all cells are in contact with air. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are uh, exchanged by the process of diffusion. Diffusion means uh, the movement of gases particles from higher concentration to lower concentration. The direction of diffusion depends upon the environment condition and the requirement of the plant body. 
in night time during night time carbon dioxide release is the main activity in plants because the respiratory rate in night time is very high so the carbon dioxide release is the main activity in plants during night time and during day time oxygen is released so the main activity here is photosynthesis oxygen is the byproduct of photosynthesis or oxygen is the waste product in photosynthesis so during day time oxygen release is the main activity the photosynthesis rate is very high during day time so oxygen is released during day time it doesn't mean that there is no respiration respiration also takes place in day time but the rate of respiration is very low and the carbon dioxide released is utilized for the process of photosynthesis respiration in animals animals have evolved different organs for the uptake of oxygen from the environment and for getting rid of uh, carbon dioxide produced terrestrial animals can breathe the oxygen in the atmosphere that present in the atmosphere aquatic organism need to use oxygen dissolved in water so dissolved oxygen is very less in water that's why uh, these organism have to respire very fast or breathe very fast the rate of breathing in aquatic organism is much faster than terrestrial organism why because the amount of dissolved oxygen is fairly low compared to the amount of oxygen in the air that's why the breathing rate in aquatic organism is much faster than terrestrial organisms this is human respiratory system it starts from nostrils then nasal cavity nasal cavity contains hairs and uh, mucus which filter the particles present in the air then it leads to pharynx pharynx is common passage for digestive system and also for respiratory system then larynx which is also known as voice box then trachea trachea is covered by rings of cartilage that's why trachea never collapse if there is no air inside the inside the trachea or inside the windpipe if there is no air inside the windpipe or trachea it never collapse because of the presence of rings of cartilage then trachea divides to form bronchi then bronchi divides to form bronchioles and at the tip of the bron bronchiole there is a, a sac like structure known as alveolar sac this alveolar sac is the site for exchange of gases like uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place in our body in alveolar sac inside the lungs it also takes place in tissues but in lungs the exchange takes place in alveolar sac and you can see here this structure is called diaphragm which separate the lung cavity from abdomen or it separate thorax it separate the thoracic region from abdomen so there is a separation that's known as diaphragm so due to the movement of diaphragm upward movement and downward movement of diaphragm volume inside the lung cavity increase or decrease and this diaphragm is very much involved in the process of breathing if any damage takes place in diaphragm it will leads to the disruption of this breathing process so diaphragm is very important component in case of breathing mechanism of breathing breathing involves inhalation so what are the changes takes place in our body when we inhale when we inhale diaphragm flattens ribs move upward and volume inside the lung cavity increases due to this process movement of air takes place from atmosphere to lung cavity because uh, inside the lung cavity the pressure is very low outside atmosphere the pressure is very high so movement of air always takes place from higher pressure to low pressure so movement of air takes place from atmosphere to inside the lung cavity that process takes place during inhalation diaphragm flattens 
ribs move upward due to these changes volume inside the lung cavity increases exhalation the reverse process takes place diaphragm becomes dome shaped if diaphragm become dome shaped the thoracic cavity or lung cavity decreases or volume inside the lung cavity decreases or ribs move downward due to these two process or due to these two change changes volume inside the lung cavity decreases if volume decreases pressure increases so from inside the lungs air move outside that's known as exhalation carbon dioxide rich air is released outside from the lungs exhalation process alveoli it's a balloon like structure gaseous exchange takes place in alveoli alveoli is very thin moist and supplied with blood capillaries surface area is also very large these features helps in exchange of gases so these are the features of a respiratory surface is a balloon like structure due to the balloon like structure the surface area is very large and it is very thin moist so the diffusion process takes place very fast and it's supplied with blood capillaries so oxygen or carbon dioxide dissolved in this uh, blood and transportation takes place so in our body uh, in lungs uh, alveoli is the respiratory surface so these are the criteria to be satisfied for a respiratory surface it should be very thin it should be moist supplied with blood capillaries and surface area should be very large millions of alveoli is present in our lungs in our both lungs millions of alveoli is present that's why exchange of gases takes place in an sufficient and efficient manner residual volume volume of air present in lung cavity after forceful exhalation is called residual volume so volume of air present in lung cavity after forceful exhalation due to this continuous exchange of gases takes place continuous exchange of gases takes place in our body due to the presence of residual volume continuous exchange of gases takes place so we can say that breathing is rhythmic gaseous exchange is uh, continuous in breathing process there is a inhalation process and exhalation process in exchange of gases which takes place continuously in our body which due to the presence of residual volume transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen combined with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin oxygen has high affinity to hemoglobin that's why oxygen combined with hemoglobin and the transport of oxygen takes place more in the form of oxyhemoglobin carbon dioxide is dissolved in water it is transported in dissolved form so in this way carbon dioxide transport and oxygen transport takes place in our body this is all about respiration thanks for watching if you like this video like share and subscribe